Okay, let me ask you a question. When you make a call session, when you're calling for sale by owners, expires, circle prospecting, even calling a, a list of old Zillow leads or whatever, whatever your prospecting looks like, Facebook leads, whatever it is, you know, when you're calling these prospects, do most of the time you walk away from those sessions, do you feel like you really didn't accomplish much? Like you, you, you had this call session and maybe you've got a, a couple of good conversations and some future business and, and people like you or whatever, but you don't really feel like you, you really accomplished anything for the now, right this second. Like you don't have any momentum towards a possible deal, right? Well, the thing is, is this is how most agents feel. Okay, this is how most agents feel when they get through with the call session. So for, the, for those agents, for most agents, it's totally normal. It's totally normal. But I submit to you that you shouldn't feel that way. No, no, no. In fact, I feel like that at the end of call sessions, you should actually feel like you have something tangible. You got something out of that call session that you can now take and run with to actually work on a possible deal for today. Yes, yes, we wanna set up all kinds of future business. We're building our database. We're working on our million dollar business for you know five years out, six years out, seven years out. And the people we talk to today that do not buy anything or sell anything, those are the clients that are gonna get you to the million dollars in year six. I get it. And we're going to retain those relationships and build those relationships. But for a second, okay, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about business right now, all right? Because I think that that's something that, you know, a lot of coaches only coach on business now. And that's great. That's great. I coach on business now and later. And I coach to do it at the same time in the same swoop motion. Now, I can tell you, right? I can tell you that I know what the problem is. I've realized what the problem is with agents who have call sessions and don't feel like they got anything going today. And they'll make calls for three or four months and they don't really get anything. I know what the problem is, okay? In this video, I wanna share with you exactly what the problem is. I wanna share with you exactly how you can fix the problem now and I'm going to share the clip of a, of a call session, the very last call of a call session that I recently did where I picked up a $2 million listing appointment using this exact strategy, all right? So I'm going to run through all this. Now, first, first, I want to tell you how I realized this, okay? This week, I had a call session. I did live calls right here on YouTube. You can go back and watch it. I'll link it at the end. And the call I'm going to show you at the end is the last call of that session. And as I'm making this call session, one thing I'm realizing is that, hey, like I'm not only out here teaching you how to do it, I'm doing it in front of you so you can see me do it. A lot of these people will teach you how to prospect, but they won't actually prospect in front of you in real time, live, where, you know, look, I had people hang up on me. I had two people hang up on me in that call session. My call sessions look exactly like yours. It's not that you're not running into people who would do deals or are doing deals or may do deals in the near future. The problem is, is you don't, you, you don't understand what the real objective of the call is. And that's what, that's what I want to cover here. But when I made, when I was making these calls, I came to this, this revelation, right? This was like, it was like an out of body experience that like hit me like a ton of bricks, exactly what most agents problem is. And so I'm, I'm doing this call session and I'm calling expireds. I'm calling expireds and through calling expireds, I run into a buyer. Now I, I'm just going to like say a side note, most expireds, most expireds I did business with, I represented them as a buyer. I'm not going after the listing. I'm using the properties as an excuse to talk to people to see if I can connect with them to see, in fact, what it is they want to do and why so that I can see if there's, a, a, if there's an opportunity to help them do it. Okay, you got to get out of this. I'm going after the listing. I'm handling objections. I'm setting the appointment. I'm going to get the listing. You got to get away from that. You know, it, it'll work. You, you'll get some deals, you know, whatever. 
but you're just playing on the surface. I hate to tell you, you're just playing on the surface and you're never really going to, you, you could build a big business that way. I know agents that, you know, that that's that thing. That's what they do. And if that's what you do and that's your thing, awesome. That's great. But I want, I want a business that produces a hundred deals a year automatically every year. I want to wake up in six years with a hundred deals a year on my desk every year with no prospecting, right? That's the business I built. So you, know, you can follow that system if you want to, and I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. And you can get to the same place, but I'm going to get there way faster, way faster. And, and, and like, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, you know, from 17 to 21, I did 5 million. I did a million a year, a hundred deals a year with no prospecting. Okay. So I did this. So in the, in the call session, I'm in the call session. I'm calling expired. I run into this buyer. They want to buy in this specific neighborhood that she mentioned. And so I immediately, I, call, I called like two or three more expired. And then I was like, you know what? I'm, what am I doing? I got a buyer that wants in this neighborhood. I immediately switched over, used Red X to just zoom in on that subdivision, got the owner's um, uh, contact information and started calling that subdivision saying, I got a buyer. I got somebody who wants to buy your house, man. So I switched over. I switched. Uh, I switched in mid call session. I literally switched uh, with an entirely different strategy, an entirely different lead, an entirely different script, an entirely different objective. All right. And and when I realized what I did, it hit me that that okay, now I know exactly something that can really help agents here. Okay. Something that could really help agents. So, so let's dive into it. What is the biggest legion mistake real estate agents are making? Here's what it is. When agents are making their calls, they're calling with a singular agenda. They're calling with a singular objective. Okay. And normally that objective is to get a listing. Okay. All right. Well, when they're making those calls, they're so zoned in. They're so, you know, zeroed in. They got their blinders on. They're just totally focused on this one objective, this one outcome. They kind of leave themselves a little blindsided to other opportunities. Now, this is where I'm going with it right here. Instead of going after leads and listings, I'm looking for situations I can then pursue. What do I mean by this? Oh, man, this is so good. So, so the story, I, I'm calling expireds when I'm calling the expireds, one of the expires expired that was a buyer is an agent. So, and it says it on Red X, this is an agent. Okay. And they own a house that expired off the market. Now, most agents would immediately walk away from that. They would immediately walk away and said, I'm not even going to call. Why would I call an agent who owns a property? And it's, why would I call that expired? They're an agent. They don't need an agent. What, what are we doing? But I love to call those people. Like, I never take agents off my list. I'm calling everybody. And another side note, I never, I never try to take off people who own longer than a certain time or less than a certain time or people that just bought in three months. I'm calling everybody. Everybody. People that just bought last month, they buy rental properties. They want to they want to sell another house. They want to maybe they don't like it after a month. They, you you don't know. Why are you trying to, you know, now if it's a situation where okay, there's a four bedroom over here, you want to call the three bedrooms, okay, call the three bedrooms. But don't just randomly for no reason, you know, mark people off a list. I mean, it don't make any sense to me, right? I'm just me speaking. So I call this agent and her house expired. And you know what? I just keep digging. I keep digging. I keep digging. I keep digging. I keep asking. I keep, you can hear the call. Yeah, It's linked in the description of this video. I'll, I'll, I'll link it at the very end of this video. You go listen to the call. I keep digging and digging and digging. And I get to the point where I realize she's trying to sell because she wants to buy. I start digging on what she wants to buy. And she's like, well, I'll buy here, here, here. And then she mentions a subdivision. She mentions a subdivision. And so here I am, uh, I, I'm in this call session and yeah, she wants to buy things and all over the place, but then she mentions the subdivision and it hit me. I'm like, okay, like she wants to buy in that subdivision. 
So now I've got something. So what is that? See, now I have found a situation. See, when we're calling, see, when you call, if you'll call looking for situations instead of, you know, appointments, leads, et cetera, like, Appointments, leads, et cetera, come from you finding situations, digging into the situations, and understanding how you can help them through the situations. That's what you're missing. And so as I'm, as I'm making this call and I find this situation, the situation is somebody owns a house. They'll sell it and buy another one. Where do they want to buy? So now I have this buyer that wants this house in the subdivision. So now I'm thinking, well, that's my buyer I can call on. For and a lot, some people are like I tell them about the hope, have a buyer and call a call a uh, call a call the subdivision they want to buy in and send letters and do emails and text messages and agents are like, what if I don't have a buyer? You know, what if I don't have a buyer? I'm like, make like three calls and you will find a buyer. Like I just did it. This was the second call I want to say. The second call I did, I found a buyer, serious buyer, ready to buy, wants to buy in a certain subdivision. Now, these sellers in that subdivision, when I'm calling and saying, hey, I got a buyer for your house, they don't care if it's an agent. Matter of fact, they never even ask me if it's an agent. They never ask me anything about the buyer, right? Now, we're just talking about them and their situation. So now I took a situation, right? I found a situation and used it to pursue other situations, what I'm looking for, ladies and gentlemen, are situations. And this is the biggest mistake that agents are making. They're going after leads and deals and listings and all that. And I'm not. I could care less if I get a listing. I'm not trying to get a listing. You know, if a listing is what that situation calls for, then I'm going to get it. That's not, that's not a question. I'm going to get the listing. Yeah. But that's not what I'm walking into the conversation as the objective of. Though I'm walking into the, the conversation with the objective of to understand a situation and see if it's a situation that's calling for immediate service. Right? Some of these people, they have a situation, but it's calling for service years from now. Awesome. I'll work with you then. I'll stay in touch. I got my weekly email going. You'll never forget me. I promise you won't never forget me. But I'm, but uh, but as I'm doing this at the same time, building my future business and my now business at the same time, I'm looking for situations I can pursue today. And, and I think what a lot of agents are doing is, is they're having call sessions and they're running through these calls so quick and they're just going through the script and they're just getting the emails or they're just trying to set the appointments or whatever it is they're trying to do. And they're rushing through it and they're not even taking the time to, 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 to they're not. Number one, they're not taking the time. Number two, they're not curious enough to actually ask the questions needed to figure out, uh, to learn more about the situation to see if there's actually an opportunity. So they're, they're literally glossing over. People that you guys are talking to on, on prospecting calls are interested in doing deals if you would just ask them more questions and dig deeper into their situations. So that is the biggest problem. You need to thank I'm going to go out here and find some situations to pursue, right, which lead to leads, deals, and listings. So I'm going to give you three tips right now to fix this whole thing for you, okay? The first one is you got to slow down. Most agents are rushing through. They're not even doing the small talk in the beginning. You got to control the pace of the conversation. If, if you're going to have a conversation that's going to be long and meaningful, you can't start out talking fast, moving through, getting to the point really. You can't because that's setting the pace that, hey, this is going to be a quick call. I'm going to get to the point quick and I'm going to get off the phone. Well, you ain't going to learn nothing on a call like that. You know, you might get a little something, whatever, but you are literally wasting the opportunity that you have with that person on the phone that you will probably never see again. You will probably never talk to that person ever again. There's a good chance. Use the time wisely. I would much rather see you. And another thing we're trying to run through to, so that we hit a certain number of dials every day. Scratch that, scratch that thought, scratch that goal. I would rather see you have, you know, um, you know, I would rather see you talk to have like, uh, you know, five pickups where three people talk for 30 minutes than to have, you know, to talk to 25 people that everybody you talk to for an average of two minutes, much rather have the five pickups and three people for 30 minutes situation, because those are probably situations. Not always. Some people just talk to talk and they'll talk and they don't want to do anything for years. And they just talk to talk. That's fine. 
But a lot of times, even those people, and here, I, like, this is me talking. A lot of times, those people, if they're talking to you, it means they're comfortable, and you keep digging. You normally find something there, whether they're somebody they know could be looking for something, and they connect you, and all of a sudden, bam, you're doing something. Um, so the first tip is you got to slow down. Slow down your voice. Relax. Take your time. Have fun. If you'll watch these call sessions, you'll see I'm trying to make people laugh. I'm trying to bring joy to people that I'm calling. I'm making it funny. I'm making it fun. I'm making it the, the energy is, is high energy, right? You, you got to create a fun, high energy environment, all right? And where does that come from? It comes from a level of confidence that you don't care if you get a deal. You don't care if you get a deal. You're trying to help people. You're trying to serve others. Slow down. Serve people. If they don't appreciate you for who you are and what you're doing, they ain't your people, and that's okay. That's okay. The second tip, go five to ten questions deeper. Go five to ten questions deep. When you run into a situation, don't stop there. Go five to ten questions deep, and every question you ask creates three more questions. And if you would listen to their answers, you will, you will, your curiosity will create those three new questions that, that spawn out of their answer. The problem is we're not listening to their answer. We're listening to us. You listen to the voice inside of your head, and it's louder than your prospect. And you're thinking, what am I going to say next? Are they going to like me? Is this going to be a deal? Um, what, if they, what, if they don't, what, what, what if this doesn't work out? You're thinking of all kinds of things. What if they ask me something I don't know? And you, all those thoughts are going through your head, and that the, that voice is louder than your prospects. You you can't even hear what they're saying. Mute the voice in your head. Focus a hundred percent of your of your mental effort on listening to them. And if you understand what they're saying, it creates questions. Go listen to my call session. You will see this in action. But but ask a question. Ask another. Go deep, 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 deep. Don't play in the surface. Don't play this one, two questions deep on the surface because then you don't really understand their situation. And what you need to do is understand their situation more than they do. All right. And the third, the third tip I'm going to give you here is to have faith. Have faith. See, when I get into a call session, my faith that when I am in the marketplace to serve people, I have the faith, I have the confidence that when I take that action to go out and serve people, then then good things will happen to me. I'm out here, I'm, I'm being smart, I'm being diligent, I'm being dependable. I'm I I am being dependable and accountable to myself. See, I'm gonna give you guys a little tip. Confidence. Okay. Confidence. When you speak confidence, you know where that comes from? It comes from the fact that you're confident in yourself, that you're accountable to yourself, that you are dependable on yourself. See, when you tell yourself, I'm going to get up at seven and you don't, you lied to yourself. You weren't dependable to yourself. You weren't accountable to yourself. And so now you know that you can't be accountable to other people. And now that shows up in your communication. Other people hear that you don't even believe in yourself, so they definitely don't believe in you, and they, they can't put their finger on it, but they see that red flag in you, and guess what they do? Run, 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 run. Run away. They don't know why, but they're going to deal with an agent they feel good about, and you don't give them that vibe. Why? Because you you, 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 you've lied to yourself so many times, and I'm not talking to you. <laughs> you right here. I'm saying most people. Maybe I am talking to you. Right. But there are people out there. And if I'm talking to you, then I want you to hear this. If I'm not talking to you, I want you to hear this so that you can spread this to other people. Mo a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are not dependable to their self. And so they know they can't be dependable to other people. And then that shows up in their communication when they're talking to people. Oh, it's the truth. It's so true. You tell yourself, I'm going to make calls today. And then you don't. And then the next day, you you kind of do, but you're on the phone and you're like, man, I can't even, I can't even hold my own schedule. I can't even hold my own schedule. How are they supposed to trust me to be where I'm supposed to be when I tell them I'm going to be there, right? And then that's another thing. Do what you say you're going to do every single time when you said you were going to do it. Without, without fail, every single time. I have never, I'm not going to say never, all right? There's always something, but I have been one of the most consistent people in my circle 
let's say. I know there's people in the world that are more consistent and 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 more everything, right? There's all there's always another level. But I will say, in my immediate circle, I am one of the most consistent people that I've seen. I'm biased because it's me, but I know that I'm true to myself, and so I know I can be true to others, and that shows up when I talk to people, and they like it. They can't again. They can't put their finger on it. They can't be like, "Oh, I don't know why I like this guy so much," but man, he just he just has this vibe that that I can trust him to do what he says he's going to do. So I want you to have faith. I want you to have faith in yourself. I want you to have faith that if you're in the marketplace, working hard, serving others, good things will happen. I want you to be accountable to yourself and dependable, and all those things will show up when you're talking to people. All right? So anyway, I'm going to show this clip. This is the last call of a, of a call session uh, this week. $2 million listing appointment using this exact strategy. So enjoy that. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to make live calls again next Wednesday. Uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern, and I've got that on my schedule for like the next six weeks. So every Wednesday, get ready. Show up. Make calls with me while I'm making calls. Be accountable to yourself. Enjoy the call. Hello? Hey, Mr. Bankston. Hey, Ricky Carruth here, EXP Realty, Aaron Foley. How you doing? Good, man. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't it, isn't it a gorgeous one out there now that it quit raining? I know it's either I was trying to I was trying to stay dry earlier. Now I'm trying to stay cool. Hey, didn't want to take up too much of your time. Um, you got a house in uh, Graham Creek, but I, uh, you know, I, I've got I, it's a funny thing. I just talked to a lady who wants a house in Graham Creek. So the chances of you wanting to sell right this second are probably slim to none. But I thought, hey, why not? Why not? You never know. Oh, oh, you're oh, you're in Bay Forest. Cool, cool, cool. Do you uh do you have an agent down here that you normally work with? You know, for the day that you die, guys. No, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. Do you do you like rental properties? Do you buy or sell anything? You just you gonna stay there till you die? It's just done deal. <laughs> gotcha, man. Gotcha. Gotcha, man. I tell you what, um, I've been doing this 25 years. I grew up here in Gulf Shores and went to Gulf Shores Elementary. But uh, if anything was to come up, man, I'd love to stay in touch with you. Just so you'd have an agent you actually had talked to before if uh, if something ever came up. Gotcha. Hey, not not a problem, man. Hey, enjoy talking with you. You have a good one. All right, buddy. See you, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Hey, Mr. Baracko. Ricky Carruth here, EXP Realty and Foley. How you doing? You 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 staying you staying dry? You staying cool? Cool, man. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I, I just talked to a lady. Um, she's, she's in orange beach, but she wants to be off the Island. She wants a house in Graham Creek. I think you got a house in Graham Creek from what I can tell. And I, I figured the chances you want to sell are probably slim to none, but I thought, why not give it a chance? Uh, first of all, I don't live in Graham Creek. What's that, sir? I said, I do not live in Graham Creek. I got you. I got, do you have a house there? I wonder why, like, I just, this is the second person. It says Graham Creek here, but they're actually in Bay Forest. But that's okay. It's it's right next to Graham Creek. So, um, you know, that could be a possibility for them. Are you guys even kicking around the possibility of doing something different right now? No, but I can tell you right now that the city has a house appraised of a million five. Yeah, oh, it, it, you said it's right on the water, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's exactly what off the top of my head. That's what I said that the last guy I talked to, he's on the water. And I said it's probably worth about one and a half million. But the, these people have deep pockets. So it's probably so that if the city thinks that, then it's probably worth what? 1.6, 1.7? No, I wouldn't tell them. You have to see the house. The house has been rebuilt in Miami Day. Yeah. 
water in it, and uh, there's a house down the street that sold after Sally that's had water in it twice and sold for a million six. Yep. So what? The other, the other reason is I don't plan to sell it. I was going to say, I. I Yeah. Well, that. It's not even had water in the garage, and it's not on stilts. Right. That was my next. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, that was my next question. If I could get you a two to two point five offer, would you actually consider it? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I don't know. Like you you telling me it's it's over the top. Um um man, it could be a possibility. Mm. Yeah. I got you, man. Mm. Okay. So, um, do you live there in this house? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. Right. Gotcha. I tell you what, man. It, it, I mean, if it didn't too, if it doesn't sound too crazy, I'd like to come by and take a look at it sometime in the next week or two. Okay. Um. Talking about in a couple of days. You're talking about the following week. This coming week? Okay. Cool. Let me just, I'll just make a note and I'll give you a ring Monday or Tuesday and just see what time would be good later next week for me to just swing through and meet you and just do a quick walkthrough. That way, at least I know what it looks like and I can wrap my head around <laughs> a two million plus offer. And if not now, maybe later, but I'd like to see it since it's that nice. Yes, sir. All right. Well, again, my name's Ricky, Ricky Carruth, EXP Realty. I've been selling property down here for 23, 22 years. So I went to Gulf Shores Elementary and stuff. I'm a local. But all right, um, I'll give you a shout early week, and I, I'll come by and see you next week. Okay, bye. All right. You have a good rest, rest of the weekend. Well, I tell you, I, I will. Absolutely. Well, I wouldn't be. I'm not going to tell anybody about anything until you tell me you you want me to <laughs> tell somebody about it. Nobody's going to know anything. I just want to come take a look at it. And, and that that's all I want to do is just meet you and, and know about it. And then we can go from there. All right, ma'am. I'll call you early week. Thank you, bro. See you, ma'am. All right, let's let's get up in there, guys. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it.